So welcome to another hub of interconnectivity. <laughs> Exploring consciousness. I'm like, whoa, come in, come in, Grub Muller. Where are you? <laughs> and uh, we have a beautiful topic today, which is called unpredictability. And we're just going to explore that a little bit directions horizontally vertically and whatever else comes up but before we get started first of all thanks for being here and uh let's just do a little round you know how how, how we all doing we're just you know saying the well my idiom was walking through what was it walking through treacle yeah i learned that expression when i came here I obviously didn't know that as an austrian you know and i thought oh so fun for me it's like pudding you know it's like i love to eat pudding we're like oh i'm swimming in pudding <laughs> so you you know you can actually look at it from different perspectives you can say it's like oh hard work but then the next thing is oh, i just floating a little bit of fluffy fluffy yellow pudding so you know everything can be reframed in my world at least you know mm -hmm. so how are you guys doing well, I was giving that same analogy, except mine was slogging through the mud, <laughs> right? Which is heavy, you know, moving through heavy and dense energy, but it makes us stronger, right? When you're going through that kind of resistance, it creates strength. It's actually for the first time, definitely this year, but even, you know, we lost that I was really aware that there was something going on. It was like, you know, I do, as Irina said, you know, I also don't go into emotional turmoils anymore, but I certainly had two, three days of a slight edginess. Like, Emma, why didn't you, can you please pick this up now? You know, and it's like, ooh, who's this bitch coming in through? <laughs> you know, so like the slight edginess of that, I was very aware of that. But I suppose once we're aware of it, we can then just, let it go as well but he was pushing through he was pushing through now Rina, you said you had a couple of things going on yeah um for me this couple of weeks uh just uh activation like you martina said uh um uh, um what is it uh, personal up uh, upright and personal up close up close, yeah, up, 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 up close and personal, uh, exactly that. So I kind of like saw those things in my field, but I didn't emphasize a lot those points, those possibilities. But this week, a couple of weeks, it just activated and I am into that. I'm doing that. I'm moving with that direction. And you know, it's exciting. I don't feel like it's uh, taking anything from my state, but it's kind of like adding that activity. And um, another thing, very interesting connection, uh, exercising, physical exercising, doing huge helps in that movement. I found gym with classes that I just adore. A lot of classes I'm going each day, sometimes a couple times a day. Uh, a day. Uh, and that physical activity, physical movement, very much helping me to move through events. Uh, those that come in towards me like a proposition. They're not attacking me, but like a proposition. That, that connection to the physical movement is really, I mean, what I'm seeing for me, because I'm writing, I get up in the morning, have my coffee, sit down, I pretty much, like Emma says to me, she says, Emma, Mama, you are like a, like a painting, stuck in the same place the whole day, you know, because once I get started, you know, by the time you look, it's already four or five hours gone, and then I have to make a, a conscious effort to go and um, go for a walk or just, and then I'll don't, I don't do it to be honest. So I'm a bit lazy with that, but um, this is why my, my lower back got activated. Now, let me be um, 
Let me ask you a question here because you're psychic uh, bitches and, and bastards here. <laughs> um, tap into my lower back. You have permission. Talk more. Say something, even, even not logical. So about basically, uh, my lower back, you know, that's an ongoing thing. It keeps coming back and then it just flares up and, you know, and this particular time, it was on Friday, it started, there was a throbbing, you know, in the kidney area, just where the adrenals are. And I had to take a few painkillers because I literally couldn't move. And there was no, I didn't, I didn't do any exercise before. There was more lack of exercise other than, you know, uh, having overexerted a muscle or anything like that. And the interesting thing was, and this is maybe a hint I want to give you, because I was thinking, okay, um, has it got something to do with my mother? And I had a chat with her because that I always, I've many, many times looked at that connection and send it back to sender and all of that. And then uh, she didn't, she didn't say anything. So I didn't really mention it. And then I had a conversation with my sister, my older sister. Um, and she said she had hip issues, lower back issues. So I, for, I looked at that and I know that my, my sister is a walk-in too. Okay. Now there was a, that's what AB told me that there is a connection between me and my sister. The walk-in with me was a connection with her and I have, it doesn't allow me to look. Something doesn't allow me to look. But it was quite interesting when she said that she had something going on as well in that area. And I thought, okay, well, there must be a connection. Um, so, but I, yeah, Is it, does that help? Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. Please, yeah. I got my picture, but I don't know, should I go first or guys, you need, uh, you want to go first, how do you feel? Well, I mean, for me, what, um, what I see is your lower three chakras blocked. So the earth star chakra, a foot below your feet, your root chakra, your sacral chakra, and then um, solar plexus up are all open solar plexus grounded in 3d right and the higher chakras grounded up in in 5d so with the lower chakras the root chakra and the and the solar uh, the sacral chakra in particular what i was getting was ancestral healing uh, uh, uh can i talk now mm -hmm. or anyone else want to talk no get it out Get it out. Tell me. Yeah, <laughs> I got a lot of pieces connected, uh, and it's connected to my statement about your dragon last time when I was. It, I skipped one. I was uh, busy. So, what I see with uh, Tanya uh, statement, uh, not so much even three D grounded but it's now showing your roots as nation you are austrian german roots those things yeah and uh, now what i feel about um world situation each nation working their way to soften to become more flexible and come into more uh, agreement with earth energies but each nation like working their way. Uh, uh, your roots in that way, uh, making you kind like, and you are in foreign country that is not your mother country. So you are kind like need to root even more who you are and uh, be more uh, sure about who you are, how you show yourself. So that is connecting to that not flexibility for you in letting go and enjoy that thing and being more, let me put into words, uh, uh, being more uh, straightforward 
with who you are, then you can make like a Baroque style, more unpredictability and more flow allowing into your movement, into your process. This is what I see. And your dragon, in this case, your connection, this is where you need to look for answers, not so much in what you already know and when you're in what you already grounded and you're doing and writing book another thing connection to that because of your uh, need to put into particular words and remembering some events so very structural work this is even uh, less allowing you that flow for you because this is kind of like your style how you do it you are very defined wording person. You know how to work with words. Uh, uh, what I would, uh, uh, what I see can help you with your back pain. First of all, smile, of course, but allow, allow yourself uh, have some period, maybe hour, maybe a couple minutes. I don't know how much you will look into that but complete not predictability, even in your movements, like physical movements, uh, like a allowing flow, or maybe even brainstorm wording, brainstorm wording without any meaning, just whatever coming from you, just allow that Baroque a little bit more connected to your um, fundamentality, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what I see. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is, in my case, more connected to national mm -hmm. uh, clearing a national process as uh, nationality and your belonging. So maybe revocation, cancel membership or whatever, or maybe look how you would change your nation. What would you add? What would you cancel already? And make that statement with your canceling uh, rigid and strict uh, features of being Austrian, being of that nature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is my vision. I think that word rigid, right? The rigidity um, showing up in the paternal ancestral lineage, right? And then the walk in you came in and went, wow, hey, here I'm here to, you know, move and shake, shake it up. And the ancestors are like, but here's here's where we are. Here's us. Yeah, yeah. Right. And things so that ancestral revocation might be a good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect. And since we are in this nation, national cleaning, a national um, re, uh, um, um, revisiting who they are, how they show in this world. And again, it's still domination control. I mean something, you see, like a nation, like a nation. And they need to move that direction. But us as people of that nation, not necessarily need to move. We can make a statement. Uh, I actually don't like that feature for my nation. I would see and more enjoy nation, my nation being like these. And since uh, you are connected to upper chakras, you are heard in universe universal oh ancestors pay attention people want this way and ancestors need to work and uh, in invisible world so this is kind of like vision what you can do yeah a bigger picture no thanks guys i mean that you're you're quite on the point here because this is the connection between the sister and me because that is actually me leaving the country and the walk in itself because it all had to do with the austro austro uh, hungarian empire yeah and me being you know having been part of the uh, the mystery schools and all the shit that went down there and everything so that is very much that kind of connection yeah so you are you are spot on there yeah well done anyone else who wants to Give me that uh, thing. I guess. Yeah. Talk about my back. Lana, I think I think Lana missed the original request, but it was to tap into Martina's um, sacral sacral chakra, lower back. 
Mm -hmm. right, she's having some issues. Thanks. <laughs> well, I don't have anything to contribute yet. So, but thank you, uh, Tanya, for uh, letting me know what the topic is about. Appreciate that. No, thanks, guys. I, I, obviously, that's that's very useful for me. So um, let's go into our. Well, that was unpredictable, right? Going straight into this. So let's talk about unpredictability. And what is the value? What is the value? Okay, let, let's turn it around first. What is the value of predictability? Well, having consistency. Mm -hmm. Right, having a, a routine, right? Having like a regular meditation routine or a grounding routine, an exercise regimen that I think when we do, you know, something every day, it, you know, helps us get in a, in a rhythm with life. Mm-hmm. Be more shortened in life, less stressful. Be more what? Be more? Shortened. Like sure about where you're going, shortened. And less stressful for some people. Mm -hmm. I want to add to what Irina is saying there and what Tanya is saying. Um, when something is predictable, there is less fear involved. You're not afraid of what the situation is because you can predict what's going to happen, what's going to go on, what's going to go down. Um, so you are more mentally and physically prepared for whatever is going to take place. So, so that more that preparedness and that la lack of fear, less fear. That is based on what? And our past experience, right? Yeah, your knowingness, your wisdom, your knowledge that you've gained. So would we- Pattern recognition. Say again? Oh, the pattern recognition. Like, you know, to me, uh, was it like a kind of a comfort zone, you know, predict predictability, comfort zone. So like, oh, you know what they're gonna, you know, you know what's gonna happen, you know? Mm -hmm. Like the discomfort is like the opposite. Like, you know, you don't know what's gonna happen. So do we ever know what's going to happen? Well, it depends what it is, I guess. Yeah. So would we say that predictability is limiting? For me, for sure. I don't like to be, uh, to have too much predictability. I like blurry picture in front of me, but then details, if I do have details in front of me, it's like already I did it and it's boring. So I like to step into blurry picture. It's more exciting for me. I'm a Taurus, so <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, you know, I like, I like things that are, that are predictable. I like knowing what I'm going to, do right what's for dinner what i you know what what's going to happen that day but i think within that predictability then you know there's there's a comfort zone but then there's also room for little unpredictable things right if i say oh okay i know i'm i have clients at this time and i'm going to you know eat before then or you know whatever then i can find other ways to create, you know, change and unpredictability within that structure. Hmm. So it's a starting point. It's a like, a, you know, where to take off from and then take it into whatever direction. Yeah. Okay, so let's just try and uncreate all of that. Can I just come in with something oh, here? Yes, do. Yeah, just stop me. Um, we're just going to 
say something about the unpredictability and getting comfortable with it because that's how it seems in my life anyway at the moment and what I'm seeing around it's like whatever comfort zone I've had has really been pulled away and getting used to this unpredictability and as I was just kind of formulating that flash concept all the fuses in the house just went so gone computer gone everything gone we're in darkness and it's like I was sitting there thinking that's about how life is at the moment for me and getting comfortable within the creativity of it because it's like letting the choices fan out in front of me to say how do I want to behave with this do I want to get pissed what do I want to do and in the end I just sat here for a little bit and then wandered out to the fuse box to flip them back on but not flip back on it's like you go even deeper into this unpredictability now the fuses have gone and I was all right with it I was really okay with it and then when came back here couldn't get the computer to go on it was like it was just one thing after another and it was like okay this is getting funny now and I think in some senses maybe that's what I'm learning find the humor within the unpredictability and the ridiculousness within it to be able to look at my own predictable responses that have been built up and that's worldwide like Irina says it's like sometimes it feels like I'm living in the biggest comedy show that's happening because it can't be for real what's happening or I have been so conditioned even though it can do sometimes the pattern recognition it's like something within is so conditioned here and so today with what just happened with the fuses it's like thank you everybody and I have a funny feeling that in the first few minutes of the show there's something that my conditioning made very sure I didn't listen to I'm gonna have a little check on that one because timing is everything so I've written down I came back in at 619 and it's like what went on before so this is interesting because we we were talking about portals and I, I I don't think we we record that we didn't record that very beginning but you did come on there for the portal as well the very very beginning huh? and then it then it went the portal. And Mm -hmm. You know, what she missed was talking about Martina, yeah. right? And Irina talking about nations. So where are you from originally? Uh, London, UK. And background in terms of um, nationalities, anything? anything yeah, Danish, that? father Danish very Viking, Viking line. And where, where are you located now? Uh, Mallorca, an island, Spain, off Spain. Okay. The, the, um, look, I mean, we're all ancestrally uh, connected, every single one, especially every single one on this call today, because of the ancestral energies that we are um, mentioned early on, yeah. Um, it's also the, 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 it's interesting with those portals because uh, you know some places obviously lend themselves more to be portals, but then again you know there's there's certain times that are better for portals to, to go there you know and to these places or not. But literally there's every second, every centimeter there can be a portal, you know, that we can open up just by having this kind of conversation, you know. And uh, whatever interferes with 
our particular DNA makeup, soul codes and everything, that can just disconnect you by saying, oh, I'm not going to go and sit there in that portal right now. <laughs> God knows what this opens up into. Or, you know, this is not where I have to be, that kind of stuff. So it's, it's interesting how this stuff works, eh? Very. I see it's the easiest way just to uh, work with your experience only. We are not that simple, I believe. Not any one of us, especially on this call, uh, we connected to our ancestral world more deeper, much deeper. And uh, we can, as Andrew was saying, only you, you ancestor number one. So you activating all that entire ancestral work, ancestral experience in the invisible world. So uh, what I see in my experience, uh, it's not enough for me just to work with my personal stuff. That's all the time I feel asked by my ancestral connection to make statement into universe uh, from being a representative of ancestral world, ancestral experience. We done with that. And what do I see as uh, my desirable future in connection to my ancestors? Mm. Mm. It's all that I'm asking from me when I work personal stuff to make a statement on that level. Yes. So this is kind of that shift that we can speed up what changing, what happening in our world on earth and an entire universe, of course, mm. into direction where we want to see earth experience and universal experience. Because those guys who are active, domination control, war mentality, they do that statement all the time. They never stop doing that statement. But us, we were passively observing and following with that propaganda thing, whatever we were experiencing in a moment for our mastery limitations, yeah? Today, we can make statement and that statement will be heard because this is where universe going today. Not into wars, not into domination control here. Yeah. So Irina, Irina, I'm laughing here in the background because uh, <laughs> this morning I did exactly what you were saying. <laughs> Because it came to me, the talk came to me, I am the apex of my ancestral lineage, living, alive, boots on the ground, on the planet. And my uh, wisdom is equal to my responsibility right now to make these statements for my ancestors, for my DNA lineage, past, present, and future. So that's why I'm laughing here, because you're confirming to me right now that what I did, um, I'm correct in doing that. So thank you for that confirmation. I really, really appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. I'm enjoying your statement because I'm doing this kind of statements, I don't know, several years already. I'm doing it, but it was not that active in the past, even I did more statements in my past, now I'm enjoying looking into the world and see already result of my statement that is not working already that way. And this one changed. I'm adding more and more to my excitement with each my connection to the world. Thank you, Lana. Yeah. Yeah, Let's yeah. Um, because, you know, something pissed me off this morning as I was dwelling and pondering on it. And I said, you know what? I have all this information that I've learned from AB's work and uh, other works as well. Um, when I talk to my family members and things like that, they're, they don't have the knowledge that I have um, from learning all of this. So that does make me the apex of my DNA lineage currently. And that gives me the right to stand up for my DNA lineage and say, no, no more of this shenanigans. I am not going to accept it for my DNA lineage, my soul family, past, present, future, multidimensionally. 
because I have this knowledge and my knowledge and wisdom, you know, I have to use that to take my lineage forward and to break all these contracts, these vows, these agreements, these tacit consents that were given away or taken from us ruthlessly, you know, and put a stop to it, an end to it right now and say no more because the, the universe is not working against us. The universe is working with us. This is another statement that Amy has put out there. Understand that the universe is working with you, not against you. So that gives me the right to say no, no to all these things and to break all these uh, contracts, vows, agreements, fine prints, and to clear it out for my ancestors, past, present, and future, multidimensionally. So we are free from all of this going into the fifth world of peace. Not even just free, integrating, because when we say it was taken from us, it's not exactly right. We agreed not to be that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's changing your approach and it's changing vibration when you remember that bigger picture. It's not taken. It never was taken. It's all the time was with us. We just didn't use it. Right. right. So in this case, integrate uh, um, take all those statements, all those records into your energy field. Wow, look at, at me and I don't know, me ancestor that or that one. Uh, I was going through that experience. Wow, how did I do it? And integrate that and then say, no, in my future, I don't want that anymore. This is for me more, more um, cleaner approach. You're not blaming, you're not in a position to step to confront something or fight with something because you don't want to fight with anything. Everything for um, experience, this is major thing here for us. Yeah. Whatever coming, we're experiencing. Yeah. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Thanks very much, girls, because that, or ladies rather, that's very much like an illustration of a concept that is linked to predictability or unpredictability as such, uh, which is hindsight. Using hindsight to propel foresight, right? And I think lots of people get hung up in terms of, you know, uh, psychic abilities and I'm not psychic this and I'm not psychic that. And in reality, it's got nothing to do with being psychic, but actually allowing yourself to look, to tap, rather tap into it, into the past, gaining the wisdom of everything there, and then starting to apply that to the future. And this is the lovely thing about this implicate order business where the past, the present, and the future is all available to us at any time. To step into it and to make it expressing, express it through your perspective and your, your, your learning, your lesson. I is wanted to add, let me add something here, right here, Martina. Mm -hmm. What I did this morning, um, falls in in the same line with unpredictability because what i did was i did not prepare for that i just it was unpredictable so as the flow was happening i did what i did so that's for me is uh on my behalf is what was unpredictable uh thanks for that mm -hmm. now let's look at that together Whenever we think something is unpredictable, could, is it actually something that we could have predicted if we would have acknowledged our awareness? Because if I look, if I look at the back pain that's come up and I was like, oh, this came out of the blue, you know, like, has it really come out of the blue? If I use my awareness and acknowledge what, you know, I've been saying to people, it's Austria, it's Germany, it's Australia, look at the consciousness of the country, you know. Yeah. Just like Arena said, it's all connected there. I'm connected with this. So it's almost, you know, I, I say it's a surprise, but was it really? 
what is actually this is this is this is a, the question here is there anything really unpredictable yeah <laughs> when we follow the path back it depends on your level of awareness again mm -hmm. if you still play in just 3d experience you more decline, uh, inclined to have that unpredictable stuff. But when you allow already step on your expansion and you embrace already your presence on in, in invisible world, in this case, it's very murky uh, predictability. It's unpredictability. I mean, uh, it's um, already you feel it. It's not maybe in your physical world yes, yet, but you already feel it. So, so. I challenge you and myself, and not necessarily just now, but to, to, to look for something that is truly, truly unpredictable, which you could never have in your wildest imagination seen it coming thought about it yeah i, I immediately have it my right. awakening right. i didn't see it at all i even don't remember really i don't remember how i appeared in my first class in my first group i never was interested in that type of i was normal person with family kids parents whatever drama drama all that stuff I never looked into that direction. And then I spent with that group five years, each week for two meetings for three hours. Five beautiful years that changed my life completely. My first meeting was that way. I was sitting three hours looking at those people who are talking about serious stuff, about some subtle energies, some uh, connections, and I'm like, Wow, is it true? Is it true? I was like, you know, like I even can't say how was it for me, but it was a, a highest excitement in my life at that point. I couldn't deny anything. I didn't even doubt. I was just like looking like a kid in candy store, like, wow, look at this and this and this opening and this opening. It was unpredictable for me. So now I want you guys to look into the future. For another kind of that kind of energy of total something that you've never ever and I'm not saying it's going to come up just now. I'm just saying let's open ourselves up to that. What, what is there that we have, what is so, 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 so unpredictable that we would have never at this level of our awareness, once it happens, like, okay, of course, yeah, contract, ah, la, 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 la. If you think of it now, Irina, of course, it's very clear that this had to happen. And if you drop your barrels and expand that, you can actually see when you sign the bloody contract for it as well. So the question now is, what is the next level of that? And that's just a contemplation we can play with. And it came out, I, I thought, has anyone seen uh, Discovery of Witches? Yeah, the, the third uh, series, season? I haven't seen the third season yet, but the first two, yes. Okay, so I'm not gonna give anything away, but in the third, what, what came so, what was so, you know, been writing all these future treatments and everything and, and then I when I watched this series and what transpired in the end which I'm not gonna you know give away uh at the end of the day so not to spoil it but the planning that got uh, went into the final not you know in order for things to happen over hundreds of years Make me realize I'm like, oh my God, it's almost like it's what we do when we do a future treatment, right? 
all these people that came together that had to come together because that one person and there was no stepping on oh, that's my mom sorry guys <laughs> mama say hi that's my mama mama ich muss die zurückrufen ja zurück die zurück anyway um that planning that's my mama how interesting is that <laughs> my bloody fucking austria and there she is right hilarious um that's the unpredictability of mama college <laughs> yeah but then again if we use our levels of awareness we shouldn't be even surprised by yeah. that that's what i'm saying you know i'm not saying don't go for surprises but like yeah obviously she's calling right <laughs> that kind of thing so anyway so that planning that went into for whatever happened in the end and it just made me realize i'm like oh my god that's exactly what you were saying what lana was saying in terms of creating our future over hundreds of years predefined predictability is it unpredictable then no because we've already created our future right so what is this bloody unpredictability makes no sense to me anymore right what is it what's the value of unpredictability can i come up with something here martina it's i just wrote something down and it's predictability is the known unknown and unpredictability is the unknown known which is in a way like a word salad. They can cancel each other out. That's awesome. And um, they absolutely are a limitation, both of them. Unknown known. So I, that, I like that. So making the unknown known is unpredictability. Is that what you're saying? No, what I'm saying, predictability is the known unknown. And then if you flip it, unpredictability is the unknown known. Mm -hmm. They cancel each other out mm -hmm. effectively. Mm -hmm. And if you hold on to them, they're a bandwidth of limitation that keep you in place. That give you a particular experience. Yeah, and if you slip in between the two, you're into full expansion. Yes. We live in world already done, everything already done. I, uh, uh, besides where we are going now, where we are going now, nothing knows, no one knows. We are 100% free will creative beings, so we can create anything. This is that unpredictability on universal level, I believe. That's but the virginity, yeah, that's the virginity of the word, if you want. That's the purity of it. Yes, and I feel it still, it's predictable. Why, I, when I looked into that future you asked, it just more light that I never experienced before. No details, but more light. So it's still predictable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I what can I do here. with that more light? I don't know. But I know it's light. It's more light. I want to add here to everything that you guys are saying that there's a, there's a statement that um, Andrew always say is that I don't want to know everything. So that's like the, um, the unpredictable part that if you knew everything, that would take away the fun of the moment when you get into the moment <laughs> having the experience so uh i like the unpredictability of uh, the situation you know even though you say we we realize that everything's already done right we're just going and having the experience in the moment and um, not knowing what the moment will be it's enjoyable it doesn't take the fun away from it. Well, and I think too that <clears throat> there's a level of 
the outcome, the ultimate outcome is known, but how we get there is not necessarily known. There's so many potentials for how we get there. And I think those potentials right now, at least what, what I feel in like my spotty sense is that they're changing so rapidly. Like I was driving the other day and I heard like the old clickers of like the airport uh, arrival boards and stuff like that. Like that just, uh, I got a flash of that, but that's how quickly the potentials are changing and the timelines are changing and that noise just stuck with me. So I, I'm like you, Irina, I think that I feel more light. We don't know exactly what it's gonna look like, but we're gonna get there. But the way we get there is, is changing so fast that there's no known way yet. And it's open 360. There is no rules, just open 360. How you will use that more light? It's only saying, can you embrace that more light? And this is what we need to do as personal work. How you can become that more light and still being human. I think that that more light, you just give me a thought here. <laughs> I'm predicting this now. Why do we have to uh, have the measurement of 360? Why in this future can't it expand to like 500? Why stop at 360? You see, I'm measuring by a uh, uh, major shape of this universe. It's a sphere, it's 360. Yeah. So well, who created I, 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 Yeah. <laughs> who created 360? Can we undo 360 and and uh, make it a larger number? I believe Let's... universe will change. Rules of yeah. universe will change if we change 360. <laughs> it would be something else. <laughs> yeah. Um, Alfredo, you've got your hand up. Yeah. So, <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, there, but... It's directly directed to unpredictable. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was going out for a run. I was like, all right, cool. I'm just going to go out for a run because I just feel like it. This freaking pack of dogs just ran into me. I fell over. <laughs> I was in a, I, I was like, what? I just fell over the ground. I was like, God, like, of course, of course it's going to happen. You know, like. <laughs> Uh, it's, it was I don't know. I mean, it was all fun, you know. I just felt like it related to the topic. I was like, I didn't. I don't know. It's, it's part of the play. <laughs> that, that's it. I'm done. I would call that predictability because you focused on it. You created it. <laughs> this is that more light. Uh, it's showing us already more light. Just coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was probably like I mean they they. They were all over me because, <laughs> yeah, Lee. Okay. You know that uh, I said I mentioned the number five hundred, and uh, there is there's some uh, folks um, that have a YouTube channel that they do uh, a reading based on frequency, and they said I think the number of the frequency of love is five hundred. <laughs> So I was just thinking about that number, 500, and Alfredo uh, tumbling over, and you're talking about more light. So he's in the light of that 500 number of love, and maybe that's where the, uh, the universe, the unpredictable ability in the universe is taking us to the number 500 instead of 360. We're shifting out into that 500 frequency number of this, you know, bigger more light of love 500 of what i think the measuring of the frequency the frequency number uh the love, hertz. love vibrates at is 500 hertz yeah did yeah. you saying before uh what is it 532 or 3 uh, 532 yeah, like 528 yeah. oh 528 yeah hertz it's a new love, 500. Love, 500. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know what they use to do the measurement, but it's like, um, I don't know. I really don't know. I can't explain it, but there's like different levels 
uh, it goes from like one to a thousand. And uh, when you reach 500, when you're, when you're vibrating at 500 or your frequency is being measured at 500, you're at, you know, the level of love, like full love or whatever. And you go beyond that, then it starts to measure ascended masters and stuff like that. Right. So I was just thinking, because I mentioned the number 500, why do we stick at 360? And then the 500 number came back into my mind. I remember <laughs> that. Good. Here, there's, um, there's a frequency, frequencies of consciousness. I have a slide that I can drop in the, um, in the chat here. If I can find it. Okay. The different levels of, of consciousness. Yeah, um, I can't remember who did this one, but it's, um, let's see, it's kind of small because it's a screenshot, but self-enlightenment is a frequency of 700 to 1,000, like all beingness, peace, bliss, 600, oneness 540 that's oneness and serenity um loving love the frequency of 500 wise understanding 400 mercy and forgiveness 350 inspiration optimism 310 enabling neutrality trust 250 and so once you start getting under 200 yeah, that gets into kind of like, um, let's see, 200, permitting, affirmation, indifference, 175, scorn, uh, vengefulness, 150, denying, 125, um, you know, it goes all the way down to 20, which is like shame and humiliation. Guys, look how quickly we turned our more light into predictable scale someone created and we already exciting to explore that thing. This is how propaganda works. Pay attention. We just oh, had experience. No, 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 no. We are excited to explore it, which is good. So let's explore it because that limits all the time. This is the thing, you know, we have this saying in my culture, when a bird um, a poor stuck, entire bird gone. So you need to pay attention what you are putting your uh, energy into. So uh, yes, maybe that scale uh, serving someone's and, uh, but if it's not serving you, you just skip it. Mm -hmm. And you use your light, more light, to explore something else. But it's perfect. I, I thank you so much because it's a perfect example be, what between predictability and unpredictability and the limitations behind it. Because we are, I've just chosen grief, yeah? If I choose grief, 75, right? Now, we are, this is, this, this, uh, column predicts grief as 75 it's a low level of, of of consciousness there right now grief is one of the highest for me the way i look at it is one of the highest levels of consciousness when you understand what it actually is right that's why it's personal. You understand it, but a lot of people not on that level yet, and they will be caught in those numbers and stuck for some period of life with those numbers, measuring life, their personal development by those numbers. Absolutely. And this is why it is so cool that we have it here so that we can point that out right? And we can actually look at every single emotion that is on there and actually start reframing it and really look at it. What, what, what does it mean to you personally? And what is the real energy behind that? And where is the limitation? Yeah. So this whole idea of talking about unpredictability and predictability is exactly that, because at the end of the day, there is no such thing. I want to take it even further back. If I consider predictability or unpredictability as a value, yeah, 
then I will now put forward here that every value that we have created in this reality is a limitation. Yeah, it was experience of limitation. That's why when I was talking about my work, I uh, presented those two emotional bodies. For me, it's reality. It's not something that I'm talking about. I live in that, in that place. I switched. I turned, uh, turned off. So I'm challenging your reality that is predictable at this stage to look at the unpredictability of this reality because the reality itself is predictable. It's not unpredictable. It is reality is factual on the basis of our past experiences, on the basis of our thought concepts, on the basis of our value system, which is a limiting concept. Now, this is getting really deep here. So if we, and this is, this is a, an interesting thing because we're talking about the I am avatar, right? So we are in charge. There is a level of identification there, which is limiting. Because every identity is limiting because it's based on values and thought processes and all of that. Now, when I talk about unpredictability, I'm interested in letting go of your values, letting go of your identity, letting go of your thoughts and feelings and emotions and all of this, and just be that. Being the neutral observer, right? So you have, like, I'm an engineer, so I love the data. So I love the numbers that Tanya sent out because that gives me something to to attach a construct to, to where I can calculate my outcome and be predictable. But my goal is to disassociate from that and feel the unpredictability of the universe. And so being able to sit in between and acknowledge that the data is there, but not utilize it and instead feel and observe and just be, just be that observer of it is, is where I'm trying to set myself now, my I am self now. Exactly. Yes, but Beautiful. utilization of that, the, making those statements, this is what how you can put not to be part of that emotion, not to be part of that uh, exp um, turmoil, whatever people going through limitations, but make your statement because you can recognize and this is would be your action. And if I grasp those numbers and I try to calculate my outcome that is buying into the propaganda and the concern that you had maria i get it perfect example and i just wanted to once oh. i i just wanted to say uh thanks to tanya for uh putting up the chart because uh what i was talking about about the couple doing their videos um was based on that same uh measurement on that same chart so thanks for that sorry martina yeah, no, and this is it. This is it. Everything is data. Everything is data and information. That's a universal thing. And all we're here to do, literally, is create more data through our experiences. Yeah, that's just what I've been writing in my book. So that's just like, okay, you know, so that's basically what we're here for. That doesn't mean that we have to define it as anything. It's just data. That's the level of allowance that we're all here for, right? The level of allowance will not must not, should not, is desired not to succeed the level of awareness, right? So that doesn't mean anything. It's the name it to claim it. This is like, okay, cool. Now for me, I love shit like that because my rebel comes out immediately and say, okay, cool, let's look at this. Well, that's not like that. That's not, doesn't work for me. But I wouldn't have had that conversation. We wouldn't have had that, you know, conversation if we wouldn't have had something to work with, right? And this is the lovely thing. Every information, every piece of information, every piece of data is a contribution for us to allow it allow it anyway but then work with it but we already worked with that five times over for 50 something million years we already know all that stuff this is the thing you don't want to work with known you want to work with unknown and this is that what can I do with that more light that is coming towards my way? What can I talk about different than I talked yesterday? This is my vision, how, how you can step into that predictable unpredictability. 
Exactly. And this is the first stepping stone we can step off, right? Now, we've already spent a whole hour stepping off there now. Right? <laughs> so give me the, what is unpredictability? What is true unpredictability for you? Well, and maybe maybe that's it, right? Where you have to know what the construct is in order to step outside the construct, right? You have to know the rules in order to break them. Right. So when you look at that chart, right, I can't remember who, who did it, but um, but a lot of people have have talked about it and, and used it. Right. And um, so, you, oh, you know, you can think of that, like grief is that construct. And are you going to stay in that grief and let it run you? Right. Or are you going to use that as as compost? right to grow something new and transcend that known frequency integrate your past grief experience and like you said make it compost exactly and grow something new and then ask and different what can i want to do with this energy exactly that's alchemy right alchemy yep. that's alchemy that's and what gardening I'm, too. <laughs> unpredictability, making the unknown known. Right. Can I can I say something here? I think this is amazing. This conversation, because now can sit with the ancestors, past and the future, and hold space. Mm -hmm. I actually don't have to do anything anymore. I don't have to know because it's known. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't have to unknow no because it is known and that will be my service mm -hmm. so um let's give it a metaphor what i'm seeing as you say that what i would as a catalyst for that yeah I would metaphorically see myself, and I'm going back to the 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 the, the, the um, discovery of witches being the weaver. So I could very much relate to the to the witch that was the weaver. All you need to do, like Shoba says, you take in ancestors, the past, the future, all the wisdom, and you just make knots with it. And then there comes a point where you drop that as well. Mm -hmm. What is that? What is that point? And that is infinity. Mm -hmm. Are you still in body with that or out of body? You're both. Mm -hmm. It cannot be separation at that point. Is that is that the fully em spiritual embodiment with the celestial uh, of a mind of peace? Absolute. What would be your Absolutely. human part in that? What would be your human, you're still human, what would be your human experience in that? You describe your subtle experience, what would be your human experience part? You're, you're grounding it in. You're grounding it into the earth. Like what? Fully. Just by being there with your what? feet on the ground, holding the energy and powering it back into the earth. You are at that point a pure vessel how you connect with your pain bills that grounding say that how again. you become practical with that how you connect your pain bills with that grounding into earth how you become practical with that you continue with your normal life there is no difference it's just there's no magic within this you just continue with your normal life and then there will be moments where you just ground yourself back in and remember what if you will ground through your normal daily life into earth as well like like a principle not just into earth separate and in your continued daily life but ground your that connection that you just described wonderful opening through your daily life into earth it has to be at the same time it's not one thing and then the other yeah. that is that is predictable and unpredictability we're back in that um duality again if you want to call it that but
but it's exactly. how to hold it in the most mundane. Exactly. But we don't need to forget about that mentioning, not to skip that step, just pronounce for ourselves that we're not skipping that step of our day-to-day -day life. Well, do you know what? Go ahead. It's actually okay. a circle. It's a circle, yeah? <laughs> because we go all the way into that celestial medium here. We under Once we have the understanding, we're going back. We're going back to simplicity, you know? It starts off being simple, having no ignorant, you know, no understanding what's going on, going through the journey, la, 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 and then we go back. And all of a sudden we go back into simplicity and the ordinary becomes extraordinary, like Shoba says. And it's, again, we're going back into the emotions, yeah? But what this is what I call the renaissance of emotions. We're starting to experience the emotions on a different, from a different level, from a different perspective. And that's that space of uh, blissfulness and joy and laughter and all of that. And it doesn't take away the anger and the fear and all that to a certain extent. That's all there because it's in the implicate order. It's all there. It's imprinted in the collective consciousness. Yeah, it doesn't matter how bloody much you are clearing, clearing, clearing. It's still there. And in a, in, a, in a moment of, I feel like shit, you're straight right there again. You know, it's there. It's available in the field. But it's your choice now. You can swear with fear or some kind of anger, or you can swear with excitement. It's completely different swear. It's completely different experience and uh uh, vibration but it's the same word yeah the same wording so it's your now choice will you use those emotions even as base for your activity for your light or you step into recognition of that celebrating what you're recognizing but not use it using that vibration even as base for your experience do you understand what i'm saying oh yeah it's like you 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 digest and digest the experience to create something new it's it's the ouroboros right the snake that eats the tail right? and you alchemized that experience of digestion into your new state of being able to accept more light than you were able before this is how I see it. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you're more grounded than you've ever been. And yeah. you express that. And this is the next level. This is this is the next level going beyond the 26 letters of the alphabet, right? This is what is meant by that. So total, total, unlimited unpredictability, the way I perceive it, is go beyond thought, is go beyond concept, beyond value, beyond the 26 letters, beyond verbalizing of everything. It's just that pure beingness, that joyful blissfulness that gets expressed through the new technologies that are coming in, right? Art, music, all of that. Anything that is not now, let, let's put this in a place where, okay, what do I do with this? What does that look like for me? It's that a little bit what Irina said to me about my back as well. Total, nothing has to, can't make sense. As soon as it makes sense, you know you're already in limitation. It has to make, it has to make no sense other than, ah, I feel it. I love what you just said create state to be, and then do everything based in that your state to be. This is how you still human, but at the same time on that new level. Yep. Well, and that's the multi-dimensional connection too, right? Because we're, we're, we started out with a certain amount of where, awareness, right? With just like, oh, here's me in this physical beingness. But as we've all gone through, you know, an awakening process and a connection process and an awareness process of that multi-dimensional multi heart, right? That we can now work with the unseen, 
and we can take the energy from the ancestral lineage and from our our physical environment and and all of the past life parts of ourselves and all of those multi-dimensional parts of ourselves and as we integrate all of that you know that is a state of being right in a state of awareness but that awareness doesn't you know mean it's going to be predictable no but there is like a beingness within it an infinite beingness I like what you just said. Awareness doesn't mean it has to be predictable. Yeah, awareness is not predictability. Awareness is actually, and I think Irina said that early on, or I can't remember who said it, is acknowledging the magnitude, the masses, the different potentials that are out there. So the unpredictability is in which one are you going? Am I going to choose? <laughs> You know what I mean? I know this one, this one, this one, this one. I know what's out there. That's my awareness. But which one will I choose? And this is the thing. I actually remember uh, having this conversation with AB at some stage. And I said, so, you know, with a walk-in, because I had my two souls in for, you know, a couple of years. I said, well, which one walked out? I said, well, we'll have to see which one you choose. What are you choosing? The galactic one? The galactic communicator? I'm like, all right, yes. You know what I mean? So there can be an unpredictability in the in the in the in the in the unpredict. No, there can be predictability in the unpredictability. No, the other way around. There can be an unpredictability in the predict. Pre- Jesus, I can't even say it anymore. Predictability, because of the infinite possibilities that are out there. I've been, um, last week I was having some technical difficulties with my phone as Shoba was having technical difficulties to get on the call today. And I woke up on Friday and my phone was totally dead. I thought, oh my gosh, I've got to, I've got to go take this drive to, you know, this place to meet some friends for lunch. And, and I, what am I going to do? I can't look up the address on my phone. I thought, oh, okay, my car has a navigator. I'll, I'll, you know, look it up on my car. So I get in my car and I punch in the address and it's not found, not found, not found. And I thought, oh, well, okay, what am I going to do? I'm running a little bit late. I'm just going to go for it. I have an idea of where this place is. And for some reason, for whatever reason it was, the universe, my guides, the angels did not want me to be electronically tracked going where I was Mm -hmm. so I found I found it you know and and as I was driving it was kind of like up on the bay and it was this pirate barbecue place a really (laughs) a really fun place we went for my friend's birthday and it was just the most beautiful portal within a portal and this energy it was like it was like walking back in time to i don't know like the gold rush era where people were you know camping and and you know there was like a little marina and the harbor master and then uh there were were people living on the land with yurts and just kind of like a garden and goats and all these ravens of course flying flying around flying around right on the bay and this place had a sculpture garden and it had a sacred geometric temple that we all, you know, we all walked into and just stood in this little temple that was, that was created from um, metal. It looked like a Burning Man creation, really, where it was like laser cut sacred geometric symbols in this temple. And there was a fire in the center and it had been covered with a mirror. And when you looked into the mirror and looked up, there were these layers and layers of and layers of cut metal that when you looked in the mirror and saw it reflected it looked like the flower of life which is behind irena so i thought what what how weird and you know how weird and unpredictably random that first of all my friend found found this place and then that i you know i had to go without any electronics to get there you know that that was a very unpredictable day and then after that i ended up you know in a number of places that i wouldn't normally be also 
So yeah, that, that kind of starting point of, I don't have a phone. Oh, well, you know, of course, you know, 20 years ago, I never carried a cell phone. Right. And I found my way around just fine. <laughs> Shows us again the limitation in the predictability, isn't it? By knowing exactly this is where I'm going to go, there's no, you know. But the interest, interesting, isn't it? You know, maybe that kind of place wouldn't, couldn't be found through through normal means, the means of, you know, your um, GPS. Well, and it turns out they had changed the name of the street, mm -hmm. which is why it wouldn't come up on my GPS. Mm -hmm was nice uh, surprise for you, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. <coughs> From your old connections. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just to make your life brighter. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh. A lot of light in that space. And consequently, you know, just a fun day for all involved. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Thank you for listening. What's the value? It's the value of predictability. Well, I want to share um, something I was thinking about here. This whole Zoom room that we're in, to me, is unpredictable because two years ago um this was not a prediction in my even in my vision that i would be on here chatting and making friends with all of you um in this moment so this in itself is an unpredictable um room that we get to gather each week and have these uh discussions so yeah, thanks, Martina, huh. and Mary, and and um, and uh, <laughs> yes. and Laura, and whomever else uh, came up with the idea of having this Zoom. Absolutely, yes. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't know any one of you otherwise. So. Unpredictability. The unpredictability has stomped us right now. We don't know what to talk about. Well, I think um, talking about, you know, going back to structure, right, and creating unpredictability within the structure. When I saw the topic for today, I thought, well, where am I going to go on my walk? And I have a walk, you know, like uh, that I know is going to take 45 minutes. And so I started going on the walk and I thought, well, I have to be a little unpredictable here on this walk. So on the way home, I went different, a, a number of different ways. And I found a mural on, in front of the house. And then I took some pictures of my dog and myself in front of this mural. So I wouldn't have done that normally. Mm -hmm. So thanks for that, because that, that just brings in the connection between choice and unpredictability yeah so we often think of when we think of unpredictable why is unpredictable and you know i've got no choice in that right because it's just how it happens to me right it's a surprise it's all cool but there is a huge link to choice so the unpredictable and again this is where it blurs the lines between predictability and unpredictability because if Tara Tanya wouldn't have gone out and chosen to do that she wouldn't have come across of that so you know see where the unpredictability is not really unpredictable it's just the infinite possibilities which one is going to come up there's this huge link and that invitation going back to choose 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 and that's what the exercise says choose every 10 seconds yeah. And if you if you like what you've chosen, well then keep choosing it, keep choosing, it, keep choosing until you choose something else. And then you know what's coming up for me 
with this unpredictability is that, again, as I said earlier on, it's that I be. It's almost like, okay, what is it that you truly wanna, what's, what's the thing? Um, truly be, because be, as soon as I say I am, I'm already defined. Now we have an understanding of I am being undefined, yeah? But there's still an element of since I am this, I am that. Well, you're not just I, this. You are that and that and that. So I be. Just say I be. Like the be allows everything else. Um, and that's probably for the beginners that don't have the understanding what I am actually means. Yeah. You know? the avatar i am the avatar age that we are we are going into but it's a it's a nice reminder to look at that that and also it links us back to nothing is really we create it we create everything and the even dance can't the remember. dance of energy yeah we created it on some level before that you know the fact that we're here, we've created it. And, and that's quite nice to, to look into that and say, okay, so what, what future treatment would I have written to myself 400 years ago to be here now or four million years ago, whatever you want to say, you know? And then there was the unpredictability. Would she trigger? Would she pull the trigger for the walk-in or not? That was just the possibility. The unpredictability was would you trigger it or not? So how many, like, this is a good question. Look at that. How many lifetimes have you um, created for yourself? And this is all the future versions. Or look in the future now. How many future yous have you got already in the, you know, in, in the north? When you go to the North Pole. But which one mm. is going to come in next? That's the unpredictability. Which one is going to come in next? If. And what kind of conversation can you have with that person? What can you pass on to them now as the teacher that you are? Because they're not all ears and listening. Sometimes we have to actually grab them by the neck and say, hey, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Just like we have to be grabbed at times, right? Shut up now and listen. So I'm shutting up. <laughs> unpredictability making the unknown known I like that and what does it require action it requires action all this being yes B, 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 in order to take it out of this implicit order, implicate order, make it explicate, got to take out. And not being attached to an outcome. Exactly, because you can choose again and again and again. If you don't like the outcome, well, fucking choose it. Choose something else. No such thing as a decision. Keep choosing, keep choosing, keep choosing. How about if 400,000 years ago, you predicted that we would come together in this room, but we would not, uh, we would have the discussion of unpredictability, but not predict what the day would be. The discussion would be an unpredictable discussion. I think we've we just left, we just left the moment open and the topic just pop up, oh, it's gonna be about unpredictability. That's a possibility also. That's why we do the no plan plan. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Having said that, all, all I planned was the word predictability, unpredictability. That's all I had planned. <laughs> I thought, okay, well, let's see what we can do with this because I ran out of ideas and I thought, okay. <laughs> Unpredictability is good. I read it. I actually wrote my 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 partner something. I said, "Do you got any ideas?" And he was talking about I'll talk about the weather and the change. I'm like, oh, no. unpredictability. Yes. 
<laughs> I think we did well. Did an hour and a half in unpredictability just on one word. See how, how big that energy is. And Jesus, I don't think we've really um, scratched the surface there. I mean, we could take this into so many unpredictable possibilities out there. Yeah, thanks for the huge energy rush. Really great. Yeah, well, that was triggered very nicely by Tanya's uh, thingy as well, right? It was really, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So really felt the whoosh. <laughs> everything's a contribution. Everything's a contribution. Consciousness includes everything, judges nothing. By now, after this discussion, what are we all going to go forth and create? Entropy. <laughs> <laughs> we got our part to be. Now we need to put it into to do. Don't change anything what you feel. Just feel what would you do with that and go for it. Mm -hmm. And another word also on this treacle energy, you know, we also likened it to stepping on a chewing gum and getting stuck. This energy at the moment, you know, that's being presented, presenting itself. And of course, we're just tapping into the collective consciousness, right? Because that's what's what's really happening. And of course, we've got ancestral shit and our own stuff to deal with as well. But that... Um, I'd like to look at it as a as an exercise in simplicity and slowing down because I know I'm by far too fast on so many things just like okay cool stay on this chewing gum now and see what can you do from here right now from here you know and then often you know it, it is accompanied with a, oh I'm so bored of this reality right that and that again is the invitation to look beyond this reality Say, okay, cool. Well, obviously, I created that for what reason? What's right about that? Great. Let's look beyond. Drop the barriers, expand out, and off you go. So I do, um, I have a crystal card deck, the Liquid Crystal Oracle, which is, which I really love. And it's um, channeled by this guy, Justin, Justin. Mohika Azar, he's from Vanuatu in the South Pacific, and talks about the 77 ancient crystals of, of Atlantis and the way that they work. And so I do a crystal draw every day, and today my crystal was Iolite. So this is a raw piece of Iolite. Mm -hmm. And Iolite is a third eye stone and connects with vision. Right. So, so talking about, you know, the discussion we had today and what are we going to create? Like, just is just a little inspiration for, for all of you to help visualize what, what's going into your future. What are you, you know, what are we seeding right now with this discussion and this day um, that we're, that we're putting forward, right? Entropy, of course, right? Where there's de deconstruction, natural deconstruction but there's also construction right creating that new from that new light like walking forward to more light may i ask um you is that uh a piece of rock or is it a crystal and uh it, iolite uh, this is raw iolite so it's a gemstone Mm -hmm. Right in its raw form, okay. and if you look, um, this is what it looks like when it's um, you know polished. And I have a, a bracelet here. Oh, nice and blue. So it's like a really dark blue with sort of like some white in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it changes color. It, it has it has um, you know like a lot of gemstones. There's different things that are different minerals that are woven into it that create mm -hmm. a certain look yeah is it very heavy the rock no it's not heavy actually it's surprisingly light for its size whereas like like hematite which is um mm -hmm. i mean these two rocks are about the same size but this yeah. is much more dense and much more heavy 
This is I have, I have a I have a rock that's very very uh, heavy. It's about the same size you're showing, but it, it's carried a lot of weight. And I found it um, in the yard one day, and I'm like, "Where did you come from?" Because I mow the grass, and a rock like that, if the mower blade would hit that, would create some problems for the lawnmower's blade. So maybe it was I a little meteorite it, that just dropped out of the sky and landed on your lawn. <laughs> it's sort of like a lightish, a whitish color. Um, but it has maybe a, a slight bit of pink in there. Um, <laughs> but it's really heavy. And it's funny, it, it goes back to, um, I picked it up and I, I had it out on my, uh, on top of the uh, grill on, on the deck. And I was sitting there um, the very day that Andrew was doing the show with um, the person that came on and he he um, he asked her to repeat the uh, revocation with the spiritual brick, the purse, Gucci purse and the brick. And that stone and that rock was sitting there. And I can still remember the very moment that this was all going on. And as he was um, asking the woman to repeat the revocation with the brick and the purse, and I'm looking at this this brick that I picked up uh, from the yard and I'm thinking, heck, yes, that's my spiritual brick. It's really, really heavy. And if you put that in a purpose and you hit or slug somebody with that, that will really create some damages. So <laughs> that's my spiritual brick. But uh, I was told that there is a, um, a consciousness in there. Um, so whether that consciousness is still in the brick or not or left i don't really know because it's, it's not something that i have uh, a consciousness to communicate with um yet i'm not at that point yet where i can talk to the brick and hear it talk back to me i'm sure it's talking back to me all the time uh, because i have it in my kitchen <laughs> and it's listening to me but uh, i can't hear it says it says hmm? Make some bread for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, and maybe that's, you know, that's your lesson in unpredictability today to do some journaling around rock channeling. Mm. Mm -hmm. Could be. Could be. <laughs> but I, I consider that break my spiritual break because, as I said, it was the same very time that Andrew um, brought that revocation into being, <laughs> you know, and I identified with that brick immediately because I was, as he was saying the revocation out loud, I was looking at that brick and I'm like, that's it. That's my spiritual brick. <laughs> I mean, if you take a picture of it and, you know, put it in the, put it in the chat right after Martina posts the Zoom, we can look at it and see if we can tell what it is. Yeah. All um, right. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. What what it's gonna say to us? Yeah. Okay. He might, it might make fun of us because I am um, the being that supposedly is in there. Um, I think is trying to be funny. <laughs> That's good. We can, we can do with a bit of fun, right? Yeah. So, lovely peeps. How we're doing? I Anyone? took your advice, Tanya. I, I got myself a Chrysacola. Oh, I was working afterwards. with that one last week. I love that. So beautiful. Yeah. That's a really nice one. I, I got another one in the mail coming because I like to have like a few personalities with me. But like right after you showed it, I was like feeling. I was like, whoa, that feels so nice. I want to carry that feeling with me, so <laughs> I had to get one. Thanks, Tanya. <laughs> All right, Wonderful. thanks for that, Chris Cola and you, because y'all both in unison, you know, <laughs> want to work with this guy a little bit. <laughs> Wonderful. Let us know what comes through, actually, you know. Fantastic. Yeah. Any, any questions, any more, uh, anything that comes up for you guys doesn't have to be related to predictability. Anything that's been on your mind? Well, I was thinking since I was um, coming in a little bit late, that was not predictable at all because 
I predicted being um, on time, but then something came up and um, I went with the flow of that. And so that was why that became an unpredictable moment of me coming in a bit late. So it was pleasant. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. yeah it's a good thing you know, you know since we've got a small group you know it's easy just to let people in and not a, not a big deal here so it's nice I'm glad you did come in and I'm glad everyone else came in and um, if there's any any topics that you want to address and look at and do let me know if you want to obviously do your own thing let me know as well otherwise I'll just pop in with whatever comes up and then of course like marissa says we she likes the no plan plans i mean look we it's really a no plan plan every time it's just nice to have a little <laughs> anger you know <laughs> okay let's go back to that you know um and we like your whatever whatever <laughs> <laughs> it works all the time that's right i agree <laughs> whatever else yes there's something else that needs to be said. The unpredictability of uh, every topic. It doesn't doesn't let me close it. So uh, I have something. Mm -hmm. So my mother-in-law who passed away in October of 2019, we've had, um, I got a, this beautiful frame and I framed her, um, the little, you know, cards from her memorial, her funeral and the, the flyer that was handed out and it was a clear frame glass with a black frame so it looked like you know that the pictures were just floating we had it on our mantle since i put those pictures together and one of the things that she always used to sing was today is the day that is full of surprises nobody knows what's gonna happen and the other day i was sitting in the kitchen and i heard a crash I'm like, oh, where, where did that come from and the picture had fallen off of the mantle and just smashed to pieces. And when I went in and like said, oh, oh, that's unfortunate that that smashed. She came in and she said, I didn't really like that picture anyway. <laughs> it's done. You don't need to be grieving anymore. You can take that down now. <laughs> I said, okay. See, this is this is this is my kind of fun as well, you know, having that kind of conversation. <laughs> Half of the time, you can't tell anyone that that's joyful for you, but you know, yeah, yeah. fantastic. Oh, you you guys are talking about crystals and um, the the uh, Alfredo had t mentioned uh, shungite last week in his uh, amongst all the crystals he was talking about. He, the shungite, I think, is bugging me to say its name right now um, to bring it in. I think uh, the shungite wants to be um, heard and um, talked about a little bit more. So uh, that's all I really, it just wants me to mention its name, shungite. Mm -hmm. Shungite so is such an awesome stone. It does so much, Lana. It's, it's always been something I've been drawn to because I'm like, I've always like, I know organized powerful for, you know, EMS. And then for me, it was always Shungite. Like Shungite always did the job and you put it in the water, it adds fullerenes and, you know, antioxidants to your water. It just filters all this stuff. And even like Andrew, I, I remember I watched this video Andrew had posted. He was talking about Shungite because some lady asked like, what's the deal with Shungite? Like what's so, what's so magical about it? He's like, oh, it holds the Akashic records of every single crystal there ever was. And like all this deep information. It's like this. To me, it's one of the most versatile crystals I've ever come across because it's so, I don't know, it's blended with me and it did so much. Yeah, Shungai is the bomb. It, yeah, <laughs> that's all I'll say about Shungai. It's, it's a cool I, crystal to work with. It's, yeah, I agree. I, oh. um, I actually wear a pendant, a Shungai pendant that I created um, for myself. Nice. And um, I shared that Shungite and my experiences uh, with Shungite uh, with other people sometimes. But what you're saying, Alfredo, is uh, the same for me. I think Shungite does so much. And what he did say about the Shungite was that the Shungite um, 
incorporates uh, includes all of the crystals past present and future and even crystals that are not even in existence yet and that's what the shungite is it's all crystals in one and it's uh, a gift from the earth mother unpredictability right <laughs> but um with that said if um in the future we want to talk about shanghai i know someone whom i can ask who has a lot of experiences with shanghai if he would like to come in and, and ah. chat with us about shanghai yeah bring him on all right that's fantastic because i i don't buy crystals usually mm -hmm. Unless I find them at markets, they find me. Then it's a different story. But this uh, Shanghai, I have for some reason last year I bought. They're Russian, right? They come from Russia. Yes. Not, not, not even that. Yeah. Big, yeah. Big, you know, from but Karela, I, Russia. I bought a, a pack of seven stones, and I was gonna, but I don't really. I just knew I had to buy them. I didn't really read up on why and you know so i'm glad you guys mentioned it now because it makes a lot of sense why i had to buy it and then i it's in my coffee machine i put it in the in the felt it's in the coffee machine where the water goes in and uh, so thanks for for mentioning that i had no idea that it includes all the crystals but i love that so it's all yeah. done oh i love it what what i i think i i could do is that i could transcribe the um the piece that andrew uh had was asked the question by that uh, woman and then um, see if I can and then I could publish it and see if I can get that guy to um, Fabulous. agree to come and chat about Shanghai with us because um, he has so much knowledge and he he's a, a beekeeper as well and he's got a lot of knowledge about uh, using Shanghai with the bees oh, how, it's, interesting. how it's sustaining the life of the bees and bringing them back and multiplying my, my, their highs and queen and my, things like that. My husband's a beekeeper also. Does he use shungai? No. He should. I, that's one of the stones I don't I don't have. I haven't been drawn the to bees, use the bees. The bees they love the shungai in their highs. They would walk over the uh, the shungai. You just got to put it at the entrance of their uh, hive. Interesting. And then um, it will help to sustain their life. But um, let me see if I can get him to come in and chat about Shanghai. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. As anyone who who, who they want to bring on to tell us about whatever, whatever. The Shanghai is a fantastic topic to uh, cover. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it. Yeah. yeah. So okay. So how does it? Because I'm I found quite a few uh, obsidians. How does it actually? Because it's also black, right? So how does it, apart from that, of course, but how does it compare to an obsidian? It includes all stones. The obsidian, There's no comparison. Oh, the it it includes every single stone uh, from the past, the present, and the future, and even those that are not um, in creation yet. It's like, it's like how he, he talks about, um, um, we can travel anywhere into the future, even places that are not created yet. It's a, it's the same concept with Shanghai. It includes all the stones uh, and crystals that are not even in creation yet. Well, that definitely works for me. And that is a beautiful stone to mention actually as well for our unpredictability show today and all the infinite possibilities and you know the unknown known and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that's what I was waiting for. Now I get the okay. Mm -hmm. To turn it I, I <laughs> he was telling me say something say my name say my name no you can't you can't close yet you can't close yet oh, okay cool <laughs> <laughs> yes nicola it is good for emf as well and i have it i always have it in my um my water jars my water bottle um i cook with the uh, shungai water and it, you know what i when i use it to make tea Mm -hmm. I find that uh, once the shung, I use the shungai water to uh, I boil the water, the boiling comes in faster. It comes up to boiling quicker than if I would use uh, the water just from the tap. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Conductive. Yeah. 
and recently, there's one thing that I must mention. Recently, I burned my uh, forearm on a baking pan um, that I just took out from the oven, carelessly, of course. And one of the things <clears throat> that the shungite, I use shungite water immediately. I sprayed my arm immediately with shungite water. And what I found, and I've done it a few times before, is that it re instantly would relieve the pain from the burn and um because it was more of a, a severe burn than um i normally would have it took a few tries uh not tries but a few times uh for me to spray my arm with the water and once the water is sitting on there you don't feel any pain it just instantly removes the pain and then of course the pain or, or you know the feeling from the burn will come back and then i'll spray it again but the next day, <clears throat> it did have a little bit of uh, swelling and the pus and things like that, but that was not a problem. The next day, I had no pain in my arm. Everything was gone. And then, of course, uh, it started to heal. Then um, I have a scar, but it's not a, a major scar or anything like that. But I find that the Shungite water did a tremendous job in healing up that burn and relieving the pain. Fantastic. So I just wanted to share that. Fantastic. Well, it's great, great application for other people to whoever listen to this, you know, whatever your favorite, uh, you know, crystal is, you can use that as well for, for healing like that. Thanks, uh, Lana, for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, my lovely peeps, Thomas talked about unpredictability for two hours. So thank you very much for coming on, being here for your contributions. And as usual, the recording goes out and then I see you all next week. Thank you. Bye. Nice to see everyone. Thanks, thank you. Bye. Bye.